So far we have learned that React is a JavaScript library for building fast and interactive user interfaces. We also learned that React is a component-based JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Components are the basic building block of a React application. Each UI consists of several components. So in this lecture, let's understand what are components and where do we use it for. A component is basically a piece of user interface. When building an application with React, we first built a bunch of components independent of each other. And then we combine all these components together to build a complex user interface. Every React application has at least one component, which is referred to as root component. And we mostly call this root component as app component. And this is just a convention. You can name your root component anything, but by convention, we call the root component as app component. So we can say that every React application is essentially a tree of components. And combining all these components together makes a user interface in React application. Let's understand components with a simple example. So here we have a very simple web application. In this web application, we have a header, a navbar, a footer, a sidebar and a main content area. Now, when we will create this application using React, we can split each of these sections into separate components. So for example, we can have a component for this navbar. Then we can have a separate component for this sidebar. Inside this sidebar, we have this popular courses section. So we can have a separate component for these sections. In the same way, we can have a separate component for this main content area. And for this main content area component, these sections will be its child components. Then we can also have a component for this footer. And combining all these components together into a root component, we create a user interface in React application. So on the top, we have our root component, which is this app component. And below that, we have a component for header, navbar, sidebar, main content area and footer. Now this sidebar can have its own child components. In the same way, this main area can have its own child components. And this is called as a tree of components. And by combining all these components together, we create a user interface. Now, usually a component is implemented as a JavaScript class, which has some state and a render method. The state here is the data that we want to display when the component is rendered. And the render method is responsible for describing what the UI should look like. The output of this render method is a React element, which is a simple plain JavaScript object that maps to a DOM element. Now this DOM element is not a real DOM element. It's just a plain JavaScript object that represents a DOM element in the memory. So basically, in case of React, we have two types of DOM, the virtual DOM and the real DOM. In the virtual DOM, the React element gets stored and the real DOM is nothing but the browser's DOM. Now here, this virtual DOM is the exact copy of real DOM. Okay. So React keeps a lightweight representation of the real DOM in the memory, which we refer to as virtual DOM. And unlike the browser or the real DOM, the virtual DOM is cheap to create. It does not consume a lot of memory. Now, when we change the state of a component, we get a new React element. Here, React will then compare this element and its children's to the previous one. And it figures out what has changed. And then it will update the part of the real DOM to keep it in sync with the virtual DOM. In this way, whenever something changes in the DOM, we don't have to reload the complete DOM. So in this way, we can update only a part of the real DOM. This also means that when building an application with React, unlike JavaScript or jQuery, we don't have to work with the DOM API in browsers directly. In other words, we don't have to write query to manipulate the DOM or attach event handlers to the DOM element. We simply change the state of our components and React will automatically update the DOM to match that state. And this is the exact reason why this JavaScript library is called as React. Because when the state changes, React essentially reacts to the state change and updates the DOM. Now we will talk about virtual DOM 
in great detail in the future lectures of this course. For now, you just need to understand that a virtual DOM is a lightweight representation of the real DOM. Whenever the state of the React application changes, it first updates the virtual DOM. And then that part of the real DOM will be changed to keep the real DOM in sync with the virtual DOM. So this was a very high level overview of what a component is and what do we use a component for in a React application. In the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's create our very first React component.